so Bayern Munich versus Stuttgart. Um, we won the match 2-1. It was a solid game. Let's go through some of the tactics. Let's talk about the implications of these tactics on the match versus PSG and my thoughts on this. And also, let's go through some picture analysis from the match. So we lined up in this 4-2-3-1 in defense, but more of a three-back formation in attack, like we have been in the past few weeks. And I can say I actually like this formation. So, But you can see Davies, Stanisic as a four-man in defense. And this is what the formation looks like in defense. Gretzka is able to track back and cover. But I worry in the PSG match for Stanisic because even in this game, Stanisic often in that right, like he's often, because by an attack with a three back formation, he's a right centre back. So it's often hard for him to get out wide. It's often hard for him. Oops. We're back. Are we back? We are back. It's often hard for him to move up and down, and because he's not a very fast player, he's not the most agile player, I worry that Stanisic will really struggle versus Mbappe. So I'll go through more in my PSG lineups video, but maybe we should get Upamecano onto that side for Mbappe instead of Stanisic, move Stanisic to left centre back because he could be a liability versus Mbappe, he's not quick and we saw that even against Stuttgart, he wasn't that quick and he wasn't that able to get close to his man because of his lack of athleticism but he is, he was solid in this game and he's been solid in recent weeks so I say we back Stanisic but I'm not sure if it's a good idea versus Mbappe also in, no, why is this happening? Okay, this should be relatively secure, I think. Um, I think that in defense, yeah, Muller, Musiala, Koman, Chupo, the 4 2 3 1 in defense really works well because Koman, Musiala able to push up wide. Now let's talk about the offense, the offense. Um, so in the offense, we had like more of a three. Um, you know, this formation that we've been rocking in recent weeks. It's a bit asymmetrical, but this is how it kind of looks in the game. So Muller and Musiala really are two tens. Davies has freedom to roam high and wide up this wing, but that also means that when we're defending defensive transitions, even though we want a 4-2-3-1 in defense, we want four at the back, when, say, Kimmich lost the ball here, then, and I'll talk about this in the pictures, but then Davies is nowhere to be seen, so there's wide open spaces around this area, Delict maybe not covering, so we need to be wary of that, especially against Mbappe, Messi, PSG's top quality players. Um, it's quite concerning. But Muller and Musiala are great as the number 10, so we saw that in the second goal where Musiala spins his man, and because he's playing slightly off-center, he actually has more space, more in the, those half spaces, so it actually works out for him. And also Muller, because Muller is kind of the focal point of this whole attack. He's able to link up all the play from the center where he wants to be. So I really like this formation and I really think it will work versus PSG. Basically the same first version as the first leg, but instead of Sané we have Muller and then Muller in the center and it's going to link all together and this, instead of an ineffectual attack, we'll have an effective attack I think versus PSG. Yeah, as I said, Gretzka uh, Kimmich is the lone six, so Gretzka really moves forward. And at times, Gretzka is bombing into the box, and with his aerial height, if you have Muller in the box taking away defenders, you have Chupa taking away defenders, it leaves Gretzka lots of space get to get into the box and get into shots. So I'll talk about these more in the pictures, but it's really um, telling that Gretzka is playing really well right now, really able to get into the box, and he could be that X factor in the final third if Chupa, if Muller are unable to score. But overall, the attack links really well together. Koman, Musiala, Muller, Chupo, Davies working really well together uh, right now. So let's go into these pitches. So I think that um, I think that as we as I as I was talking about the defense in transitions is a bit worrying. You see we have that back three because we haven't molded into the back four. Davies is not part of the back four yet because he's been too far forward. You see, he tries to come back, but in this instance, Kimmich lost the ball here, and then it creates a dangerous scenario where it's really a four on three scenario because we don't have those four defenders back. So we need to be careful of this against PSG. It's imperative that Kimmich doesn't lose balls like this in the center. Gretzka doesn't lose balls like this in the center, especially when we're so close 
to goal as well. So it'll be very important that Bayern don't cheaply give away balls that lead to attacking opportunities, counter-attacking opportunities. And as I said, I worry about Stanisic versus Mbappe. He can't get close to his man. He's slow. And especially if he's playing between centre-back and right-back, he'll be more in no-man's land and it'll be hard for him. Also, another to focal point to... Um, not focal point, maybe another key point to talk about is that shape I was talking about when we are in the attack. You see a clear um, three, like three at the back formation and Upamecano has come in here, but Kimmich is the lone CDM and then you have Muller and Chupamoting up front and then you have Musiala in that left half space. You have Davies, you have Koman. You see there's so much width provided uh, by Bayern Munich and against PSG we'll need more of this width. That's how we scored our goal versus PSG, but there's so much width that you see Davies is wide open space. This 3-1-4-2 really allows for wide open attacks. You see ball coming into Chupamoting, Chupamoting could flick it around to Muller for example, but there's still many players forward, so it's really creating offensive opportunities. But unfortunately, say we lost the ball here, in this midfield area there's four... Um, Stuttgart players, but only one Bayern player in Kimmich. So that's why I'm saying if we lose the ball, because we have five attackers, if we lost the ball before it gets to their line, say we lost the ball in this area, then the other team, Stuttgart, would have had a big counter attack versus our team. So we need to be really careful about that versus PSG. But I think our attacking power will overload um, PSG. This is what I'm talking about also. These overloads are constant in the 3-1-4-2 formation. You see here that um, Davies is in lots of lots of space really, and he's able uh, he's he, he may be able to get the goal ball later. You see Kimmich as that lone six and therefore Musiala and Gretzka. This clearly shows the 3-1-4-2 really because Musiala is here, left, right and then Muller is kind of like in the centre partnering to promoting but it creates so much space. See Coman's already in the 1v1 versus this guy and you back Coman in the 1v1 but there's also passes eventually along to Davies. Um, both, all the centre backs are kind of covered by Muller and Chupamoting so it really does work and it's creating lots of overloads. You see Gretzka's riding into this space which would create space for Chupo. Musiala will be open if this guy follows Gretzka. It's just so many offensive players because we're only playing really with one midfielder. It means that we have so much offensive firepower, but versus PSG, we need to make sure we use it and really, um, really score goals because I think we will ship a goal or two at least versus PSG, so it's going to be important that we score a few of ours as well. Now onto Gretzka's runs. This is what I'm talking about. You have so many players in the box that Gretzka, he's six foot three, he gets into good positions. He's here one second before, and then he makes a very late run into the box. And these defenders preoccupied by Muller, by Chupo, by Musiala. See, even Musiala is lacking far post. It means there's lots of space in these sort of areas, in these right half space in the box areas for Gretzka. And Gretzka had a good chance here, but. Uh, hit it straight at the keeper, but this is what I'm talking about. Gretzka's runs are gonna be so important, and he's gonna be a good scoring option, like Sane was a scoring option if Gretzka doesn't play. Gretzka also still is a scoring option, but he's able to provide that defensive stability and really track back. Say we did lost the ball here, Gretzka would track back and maybe be able to help out in this sort of area. So I think that that's um, an important part of Bayern's play. One other thing to talk about is Summer in goal. So this clip might not be clear, but Summer ball is coming from the corner and Summer is trying to claim it. But because Summer is a short keeper and this Stuttgart player was very tall, the ball fumbled in around the box and Stuttgart had a chance in on goal. So it's very worrying. Jan Sommer also early on in the match, he had a moment where he kind of miscontrolled the ball and I think it went out for a corner or something. But he's not performing that well. We'll need him on tip-top um, condition versus PSG. Maybe we need to address these crosses into the box because unlike Neuer, he can't really, um, Sommer can't really claim these as well, so we need to be very careful with defending set pieces. Maybe true promoting needs to be more in these areas because he is a tall player and he could really um, help out in these instances. But anyway, it was a solid win over Stuttgart. I think that the defense in transition is a bit worrying, but especially Stanisic versus Mbappe, I'm worried about. 
But I like Goretzka's runs, I like Goretzka's role in the team, and it seems Muller will play versus PSG, so our attack should be cohesive. So I'll be looking forward to the game, I'll do a lineups video before the game, so check that out, and thank you for watching the tactical analysis. If you enjoyed, uh, come back for more. Thank you.